this is going to be my opinion on a lot of stuff that has to do with learning how to code, becoming a self-taught programmer, the current state of the market, and everything that's going on. It's going to be a little bit of a rant, but I just kind of want to get it out there. I know that there's a lot of people out there that act like they have the answer. The truth is that nobody has the answer. Nobody. Nobody knows if AI is going to take our jobs. Nobody knows if the job market's going to bounce back. Nobody knows that if it's possible to get hired right now if you don't have a degree. Nobody knows anything, right? Most of us just have ways that we can guide people, but many of us, we, we don't know. We, we just don't know. But we all have opinions, and that's what I'm mostly going to share here. Now I'm going to start off with one thing, the AI thing. So many people are worried about AI. I don't know if it's going to take our jobs, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I also would suggest that anyone that's learning how to code right now not worry about it so much because the truth is that it's a tool that you can use to help you learn faster and help you get to where you want to be with your learning quicker. So it's like, use it. If it takes our jobs in five years and you're able to learn how to code in two years, well, guess what? You'll have three years of experience by then in five years from now, and you'll probably be a lot more marketable when AI takes our jobs and we just have to listen to what it says and copy and paste the code from it because that's pretty much all I'm doing now. What I'm saying is that there's so much clickbaity FUD and YouTubers and marketers and companies coming out trying to convince everyone that this is an AI revolution. And I have no doubt that it is. But at the same time, when we actually look at it, you've got doctored up marketing ploys by companies like the one that's coming out with Devin that turned out to be a fraud and everybody was worried about Devin and we're worried about AGI and we're worried about chat GPT five. And we're worried about like all these different things that we have no control over. If you're worried about it as a programmer, like don't worry, everybody's going to be out of a job. The secretaries are going to be out of a job. Artists are going to be out of a job because AI generated images are already taking out artists and you got Sora. That's going to take out the film industry. Everybody's going to be screwed. What are you going to do? Lose sleep at night? Honestly, I think that a lot of people look for an excuse to give up. And when they hear something like that, they're like, oh, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to learn now because AI is going to take the job. What's funny? Well, it's not funny, but recently Google laid off a bunch of people and they said that they're going to outsource to Mexico and India. And it's like everybody's worried about AI taking our jobs. And then these companies are just going to outsource our jobs before AI even gets an opportunity to do it. And there's always going to be something, some boogeyman, something to be scared of to prevent you from doing something. I wouldn't allow anything to stop me from trying to get ahead in life. And if you're learning how to code to get ahead in life, then don't let anything stop you. The fear of AI or let's talk about the fear of the job market. We are in a correction phase right now from the crazy amount of hiring that happened during COVID. The market always goes up and down, like any market, the housing market, the stock market, the crypto market, the job market. And many times a lot of those are kind of intertwined. It was super easy to get a job in 2020 to 2022. Like it was, it was so easy. Like you just can ball your resume up and throw it at a recruiter and you had a job the next day. It's not like that now. But why would you let that prevent you from getting ahead now? So there's a lot of people who set out to learn how to code. And I'm assuming that most people are just curious about it, just learning about it, just kind of procrastinating about it. And many of the people that actually watch these videos might have just been getting started. I would say that very little people who are a year into learning are watching a lot of videos like this. People that watch these videos are mostly curious about learning. And what happens is that you see these job markets and you're curious about learning and you're like, hey, I'm going to learn how to code. But you know what? This job market's bad, so I'm not going to learn right now. And then that one guy or the people that are learning and are continuing to learn because they don't care about the job market because they have determined that I don't care about the job market. I don't care about AI. I am going to learn how to code. I, I'm going to do this. And they start learning today or they started learning six months ago and they continue to learn. And six months from now or a year from now, they are still learning 
when that job market corrects or goes back up, I should say, those are the people that get hired. The people right now that are like, oh, you know what? I was going to learn, but the job market's bad, so I'm not going to learn right now. Those people, you guys that are watching this, who get talked out of learning how to code because of a bad job market or because of AI, you're the ones that will end up trying to learn how to code again when the job market peaks again or goes back up. And guess who's going to get hired? Not you, but those guys, those girls that kept learning throughout the storm and they weathered it and they now have been self-teaching for a year, a year and a half. Now they're ready. They're, they're looking good. Their projects are solid. They've got a good understanding of stuff. They can build things without any help and they are ready to get a job. They're the ones that get hired and then they become the success stories. And then the people who didn't learn are the ones that are back watching these videos a year from now where they're like, oh, get a job in three months, become a developer, all that stuff. There's very few people that actually follow through with this anyways. Like it's such a tough thing to do. Most people aren't gonna stick with it. Most people that set out to learn how to code are gonna fail. It's the reality of it. I actually got one of the best DMs ever and I loved it because the guy was like, I watched a video of yours years ago or a year ago, whatever. And he was like, you were talking about how I'm going to fail or how everybody fails when they learn how to code. And I watched it and I was like, I'm not going to let this Dorian guy dictate my future. And I'm going to show him when I do. And guess what? It's the best feeling ever. That DM was like, this is that message. I got a job but I also want to tell you how helpful your content was, how real it was, and how you were just so honest. And even though I use that for motivation to kind of say, F you, I'm going to do this anyways. And I remember thinking that same way where I, I, I thought like, I don't care what anyone says. If people tell me this is hard, I'm going to tell them you. And if they tell me that it's, that it's easy, I'm going to be mad at them when, when it was hard for me. It didn't matter. I knew that I was going to do it. And I think that that's the mindset that you have to have. It's so hard to learn how to code self-taught. It's very hard. I don't have anything to compare it to, but it will be one of the hardest things that you set out to do. And very few people, very few people, even though you see the people on social media that have done it, myself, people that have done it in shorter amounts of time, people that have done it and that are smarter than me. Like they're self-taught programmers that know algorithms. Like that blows my mind. Like those are very special people. Like I'm very special, but it's true. It's very hard to do. The fact that there's also a lot of competition, even more so now in a bad market, where you have senior level developers who are getting laid off, where you have a lot of boot camp graduates because you got boot camps churning out graduates. You got you got college graduates that are also in the woodwork now, right? Like there's there's all types of competition. Like it is a competitive, difficult industry to get into. That is why we make so much money as developers. That is why it is not an easy field. It is not an easy job. If it was easy, we wouldn't get paid six figures and everyone would be doing it. Remember that, that the harder that you have to work for something, the bigger the reward is at the end. Well, maybe not always, but generally, like the harder you work at the gym and on your diet, the better your results are going to be on your physique. Usually the more input, the more output. And if you got to put a lot into this in order to get a lot out of it and many self-taught developers aren't going to make it, you're just not going to make it. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's a harsh reality and use it as motivation like that one guy did and come back and tell me I made it because I love to hear that. Also for the sake of continuing this rant, Fang does not represent all the jobs out there but they make the biggest headlines. And while some companies might follow suit with what Fang is doing, there are so many other software developer jobs out there. And I know Uncle Bob, 
I don't, I don't know Uncle Bob, but I know that he mentions this. I, I remember listening to it a long time ago, and he mentioned it in the Primogen's uh, interview with him. And I, I don't care what you think of Uncle Bob. I appreciate the guy because he's been around for a long time. So he's got a lot of knowledge in a lot of different software-related stuff. And whether or not you agree with some of his methodologies or beliefs when it comes to building software, I don't give a shit. I'm just saying. He, he mentions that software developers double every five years. So to put that into perspective, I've been a developer for like seven years. I learned how to code in 2017, roughly seven years. I've been working as a developer. So that means that in another three years, we're going to double again, given that, you know, it doubled when I started learning how to code, which I'm not saying it did, but I'm just saying for, for, for numbers, right? So the amount of jobs as well are going to increase too. Like we're not going backwards in tech here, people. Like there are going to be way more jobs and new industries that need software, more companies, every single mom and pop store needs a website now. And I don't care how many no code solutions there are. I don't care how many tools there are for people, regular people to build things on their own. They just don't. And companies have been trying to get rid of coders and programmers for the longest time. And they never will. I guess, you know what? Let's talk about no code for a little while too, right? I'm just going to keep this rant going. I don't, I don't care if you watch this video. I don't, but I hope it's helpful if you are watching it. No code is such a meme because the truth about no code is, is that it's really good to get like a POC proof of concept or like a little MVP. But the minute you need to really do anything, you need code. And it's also written in code, <laughs> right? It reminds me of technology that I worked with and a company that I worked for. I won't mention the company, but I'll mention the technology. So I've worked with Adobe Experience Manager for a very long time. I worked with it for about three years out of my six and a half years of experience. I know it pretty well. I'm a pretty good AEM developer. And I remember our management getting sold on the latest and greatest upgrade for AEM and how they said that you weren't gonna need as many developers and that everything worked out of the box and that it was just, you get the content authors in there and they can drag and drop all the elements on the screen and they can build the web pages all on their own. They can resize stuff and they gave an excellent demo. Adobe is amazing at selling their products. They are marketers and salesmen the whole way through. Having worked with Adobe products and, and not being a big fan of them, I can tell you that they're really good at marketing because they had us convinced as a developers. We were like, holy shit, this is, man, this is big. Like we're not going to, we're, we're going to be out of a job here. And then the company upgraded and they got the latest version of AEM. And then they wanted to do something that wasn't out of the box. And the thing is, the one, what they wanted to do wasn't even that big of a thing. It was like they just wanted to make like some custom components that didn't look like all of the out of the box stuff because all of that stuff was just using bootstrap. And at the end of the day, you're like dragging and dropping, increasing squares on a page. It doesn't look that great. And the minute you want some interaction or you want the website to do anything cool, you needed developers. And that was a moment that I still remember now because I feel like I see a lot of that same stuff when I see this no code stuff. When I see people talking about AI, it's the joke is like when, when a client or a business owner or a product owner is able to tell me exactly what they want or tell AI exactly what they want, then I'll, I'll be nervous about AI taking my job. But until then, most of these people that you work with that run businesses or that even run teams that aren't developers, many of the times they can't even explain what it is they're trying to solve. They can't explain what they're trying to do and they don't know what they want. So while me as a developer, I go in and I use AI and it's super helpful and it gets me working a lot faster and it gets me finishing things and building things a lot quicker, I don't see any time soon when it's just gonna write itself. And if you wanna get ahead of the curve, 
why don't you just go learn about AI and how that stuff? I, I don't know anything about it, right? Like LLM. Okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I'll be completely honest. I don't know jack shit about AI development, but that's code too. There's going to be people that are building a bunch of stuff around AI. Go learn how to use it. Go learn how it works. Go learn how to improve it. Go learn how to build your own, right? If you don't like it, go build your own. Stop listening to all the opinions out there. If this is something that you're trying to do because you're trying to improve your financial situation, because it's something that you enjoy doing, because it's something that you want to get good at, because you want to get a job doing it, because you want to build a startup, because you just want to build your own game, or you just want to build somebody a website, you want to build your girlfriend a website for Valentine's Day, whatever the reason is, like many people want to do it because it's a good job and it pays well, but it's very hard to get into. And if you know that going in and you tough it out and you you keep learning like it doesn't matter none of this other stuff matters all these opinions that you see people talk about all these new technologies that come out and you know gosh maybe i should talk about the new technologies there's a new technology coming out every week it seems and you know what i went back to using php because it's it's nice laravel has a very mature framework and it's super nice. But what I'm saying is that there's always new technologies. There's always new things that people want to promote or sell or play around with and use because it's fun to build new things and work with new tech. Who cares? There's always going to be something. Just follow through with your game plan. Trust the process. Put in the work before you decide to quit. If you quit after three months, good. We didn't need you anyways. Sorry. Not sorry. If you quit after a year, I think you were probably way closer than you realized that you were. And you, you, need, you need to get back in there because you were probably so close to getting hired that you didn't realize. If you really put in like a solid year of learning, you built stuff, you, you, you did the grind of learning how to code, I would say that you, you probably gave up and you shouldn't have. If you give up after a couple weeks, nobody's going to remember your name. Nobody's going to talk about the, the people that give up after a few weeks. And, and people give up when they learn this stuff all the time. Like there's probably, I don't know, a hundred to one. Like out of a hundred people that start, maybe one actually becomes a self-taught programmer and gets a job doing this. I don't know. That's, I just made up those numbers, but I guarantee you that it's probably something like that, especially when it comes to self-taught. And this was just a message to self-taught developers, a big ranty video, because I'm, I'm not making this kind of content anymore because I feel that I was falling into the opinionated asshole that was trying to make content for the sake of getting views around a topic that I felt was a good topic to talk about because it was a good niche. And I'm tired of seeing so many other people use it and kind of exploit it. And uh, I wanted to just make a video to give my opinion and maybe like a warning to the self-taught developers out there who are just getting started and are stressing out because they hear so many things and they listen to so many people. Stop listening to all these people. Get your game plan. Get your roadmap. Put your head down. Work focus, network, build all the things you need to build. And I bet that you can still get a job. And all these people that are worried about all these different things, like, like I said, they weren't going to make it anyways. All right. With all that said, I'm going to stop ranting now because I'm kind of out of breath and my mouth is dry. And I hope that this video was helpful for anyone who's thinking about or trying to get into programming and maybe even is learning how to code. Maybe you're one of those people that actually has been learning for a year and is watching one of my videos. Hopefully this was helpful because I feel like I, I talked to you guys up a little bit more. All right. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.